up you guys? This is Rob from the Gay Guy Plays, and today on the Daily Grind, we're going to be spilling the tea on Anthem. What's the gameplay like? How's the fashion? What about the microtransactions? And is it worth pre-ordering? But before we go ahead and do that, I do have four, count them, four disclaimers that I need to knock out. So let's go ahead and jump on in. Now, kicking things off with disclaimer number one, no, this is not a sponsored video. And I know that a majority of you guys are out there like, Rob, we know, EA ain't trying to pay you. Bioware does not care about your ass. However, there are some egotistical ass fools out there on the internet that think that the only way someone could possibly disagree with me and my feelings towards these game companies is if they are getting paid. Well, let me break your heart right here, right now. Unfortunately, that's not true because the FTC requires me to let you guys know if I'm getting paid for in this video. And guess what? Rob's still a broke ass bitch, so I'm sorry. No money's exchanged hands here. This is just the honest truth. Moving along to disclaimer number two. This has always been known as the VIP demo, not a beta test, okay? And I need to underline that a couple times because you know, there are some people trying to make this sound better than it is, but literally, this is a demo. This is what they wanted to show the world to convince them to pre-order their game. And I'm saying this lovingly, because there were some technical issues that definitely needed to be fixed before this one out. Now, what I am aware of is the fact that this build is six weeks old. Now, part of me is like, so you had six weeks to kind of iron out some of these kinks. You got me looking at you a little bit worried if this is your demo. Now, if this was intended as a beta, they needed to be more clear with that because legitimately some people were um, paying for their services or uh, pre-ordering to try to get into the VIP demo, not the VIP beta. So disclaimer number three is where we start kind of digging into some of the bigger issues. However, I'm going to say this right now that after these disclaimers are done, I'm reviewing the game based on the gameplay alone, not the technical issues that we were experiencing. Cause I'm gonna let you know right now, if these technical issues appear in the live game, yo, Bioware, y'all just ended your career. EA ain't gonna try to have nothing to do with you because if these technical issues are still there, oh, it's off with your heads. Now, the biggest technical issue that we ran into was what I like to call the 90% loading screen limbo. Literally, your game would load up to like 90, 95% and you just sit there and nothing would happen. Now, this was like a 60, 40 percentage. 60% of the time, you get the loading screen of death. 40% of the time, you'd actually get in. Now, here's the thing. Y'all gotta remember, there's two loading screens. One loading screen to get in and one loading screen to get out, okay? So if you did manage to get into the game and then you went and you did your strongholds and you got your rares and you feel it real good, you're like, yes, this is amazing. And then you get out and you log out into the last final mission clear screen and you get the 95% loading screen limbo. You didn't get none of the gear that you just worked for. So I'm going to assume that uh, Bioware is working on fixes for this because you know they want to have a job at the end of the day. I'm assuming we're not going to see this come June 1st when they do their public demo because if the public gets to see how epically shitty this loading screen limbo issue is, okay, they ain't going to buy your game. So to hold on to your careers, to be able to put dinner, you know, on the table for your families, to be able to keep the lights on, you go make sure that all of these technical issues are ironed out, okay? But I'm letting you know with that aside, I'm gonna be focusing on the gameplay portion of this, which I definitely did love. Now, if you guys are curious about this issue, I will be checking back in um, on the June 1st demo to let you guys know, is it fucked or is, you know, are they gonna go out of business? What's happening? And I will also be checking this out at launch to see if there are any issues there because I quite enjoy the game based on the gameplay. I had a lot of fun, but you know, these technical issues, mm -mm 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 -mm. 
it's not a good day for them. And finally, we arrive at disclaimer number four. And as you can see, I went ahead and pulled out Twitter because some of y'all were getting a little feisty and had to be checked real quick. Now, as you can see on the 25th, I went ahead and tweeted out this picture of my javelin. And I was like, yo, Anthem, where's your rose gold though? Are we gonna be friends or nah? Now, as you can see, the tweet I pulled up was actually one of the friendlier ones. However, there were many people saying, it's probably going to be in the microtransactions. It's probably going to be in the microtransactions. And my first response is, oh, like in Warframe? Because you remember, we got to buy pallets in Warframe, boo. But as you can see, Evan was like, among hundreds of colors, rose gold might be among them. Just going to have to start popping the loot crates. And my response was, no loot boxes in Anthem. Hashtag confirmed. So disclaimer number four. No loot boxes in Anthem, but that's not where it ends, sweetheart. As you can see, I pulled up another tweet by Mark Dara, at Bioware Mark, I'm just saying. And I think I played with him in a game. Um, but you can see you can earn all personalization options in gameplay too. So not only do they not have loot boxes, but you'll also be able to earn all of the personalizations through gameplay. Now, I'm not sure if that's every single bit, if that's gonna be armors or whatnot, or maybe it's just gonna be certain colors, but apparently you can earn them in game, which, you know, not every game out there has. But so far from what we've heard when it comes down to microtransactions for Anthem, one of the things that they don't wanna do is to split the player base. Now again, to me, that's kind of like an obfuscated comment. Does that mean that, you know, we're not going to be paying for DLCs, I'm assuming? That's not going to be a thing that we're going to get. Um, is it just customizations? But again, you said that customizations are available in gameplay as well. Is it just going to be emotes? But clearly, what they said was they do not want to put in um, paid content that splits the player base. The only thing that I can think of is that means we're not going to have paid DLC. It may all be free. Again, these are early days. I don't know 100%. But... But from what I know, you earn all your javelins at this point in time, so I don't know. So far, the microtransactions seem very, very minimal and no loot boxes. So if y'all were already in the comments talking about loot boxes and how much we extra we're going to have to pay, apparently it's probably not going to be that bad. But then again, it is EA, so we never know. Now, with all disclaimers aside, we can actually talk about the game, which to be completely honest with you, whoo! It was real, real good. And I have some people out there that I'm sure are asking, is this like Destiny 2? Is this like Warframe? And to be frank, I don't really feel like those are the strongest influences there. Actually, if you guys had played Mass Effect Andromeda's multiplayer, or just Mass Effect Andromeda, period, it feels very Mass Effect-y. It's like they took the best parts of Mass Effect and made them even better. And and to me, it was just one of those experiences where everything felt really, really fluid, you know, unless you had some login issues and some rubber banding, which occurred every now and then. But when you got into the game and you just got into the groove, it felt so good. So not... I think that if we are going to make the comparison with Warframe and Destiny, I feel like it's a little bit closer to Destiny um, than any of that. But really, I think in my head, spot on, it's more like Mass Effect Andromeda. Now... The movement in this game, whew, it is so ridiculously fluid. The thing that I love is the transitions from, and keep in mind, I'm playing an Interceptor. So, you know, I did not try the Stormcaller because you don't have the option. You're only able to play one more class, the Colossus. The Ranger, I got to dabble around a little bit, but the second that I got my hands on the Interceptor, it felt amazing. I had triple jumps, I had dashes. You could triple jump into flight and then come down from flight into like a spinning AoE attack. Oh my God, it was so good. It was so good. I definitely really, really loved that. The only thing that I did not love... Um, was at the very, very beginning, flight was crazy. Um, now, to be honest with you, this game was, at least from what I've heard, designed for mouse, um, not mouse and keyboard, but the other things that are not mouse and keyboards, this thing, controllers, controllers. Um, so there are some uh, mouse acceleration issues when it comes to flights and when it comes, it was terrible in the water. Oh my God, you know how I hate Sharkwing in Warframe? 
No, this is this is 10 times worse. They did come out and say that they were going to be fixing that. However, my current fix is I turned down the flight sensitivity to 15% and I turned down the swim sensitivity to 5%. So just giving you an idea there. However, all of the transitions feel absolutely amazing. Combat like weaves really, really well with all of them. You can be in the air and then if you zoom in on your gun, it'll actually cause you to hover. And then while you're hovering, you can kind of like um, juke around a little bit. It feels really, really good. So movement for me was definitely fucking fantastic. Now, one of the biggest things that we need to talk about is combat. So we're going to start things off with what I think is the highlight is the abilities. Now they are on a fairly low cooldown. And again, I was playing the interceptor. Now the abilities are slotted in like mod cards. So you get really, really basic abilities, um, but you can get like rarer versions of them. So you can get an uncommon of that ability. You can get a rare of that ability. And what that does is you still have the base ability. The base ability does everything that all of the other further up abilities do. But as you get rarer, um, rarities, rarer rarities, I guess, since I'm really good at English, um, you get additional bonuses. So sometimes you'll get things like extra um, shields for your javelin. Sometimes you'll get uh, extra health drop percentages because as you guys know, there is no current healing in this game aside from you kill enemies, you'll get health drops. So you get more than that, or you can get extra bonus damage to your weapons. So all of these are like ability cards in old Warframe where you're like, oh, here's an ability card, you can slot that in. Now, the thing that I really, really like about this is we can go ahead and add in more abilities. You never feel locked in. You're like, okay, so I can run my interceptor with cluster mines and like venom spray. So I can go into an enemy, dive down from the heavens, spit venom in their face, very Saren Miasma-like, let me tell you right now, just like, and then drop some cluster mines in their face, and now they're weakened, and they've got all of these explosions going on around them, and you can run your ass out there if they're a little tough, you know? So there's that mix up, or you could do Cryoglave, and um, what is it called? There was like this, uh, this, ex this really like strong like melee ability that you're able to do. So you can do Cryoglave to freeze an enemy, then you can use this strong melee ability to finish them off and do a combo, and then you get that that icy aura. So you can really switch up the gameplay on your javelin based on these abilities. And the thing is, in my head, I was like, this is where they're starting. Like, who knows where they're going to end up? You never know. Like, right now, um, Interceptor Javelins don't have invisibility. Maybe they get invisibility at one point. And because of the fact that all of their abilities are slotted, basically slot cards, you can change up your builds based on that, and in the future, they can develop more abilities for these javelins without necessarily having to develop more javelins. Now, I have heard um, somewhere along the pipe that they might come out with more, but as far as I'm concerned, you know, you've got your four base types, and they can just expand ability-wise endlessly, which I think is absolutely fantastic. Um, so what else do I have here is that I think that the combat with these abilities feel really, really good. Like, when you go into your ultimate for your interceptor, as you guys know, it's Assassin's Blade, and you just do a whole bunch of melee in there. Oh, it feels nice, because when you do that, you become invincible, and it's just like, all right, these enemies are whooping my ass. Turn on the ulti, become invincible, get full health and full shields and everything, and go ape shit on them. So, definitely, definitely loved um, all of the ability play that they have there. Next up, um, the thing that I do want to mention is they have like a damage type system there. Um, one of the things about the abilities is you have the ability to prime enemies with certain abilities and then you can detonate using other abilities. So if we're talking about the Interceptor, one of the things you can do is I can turn on this Venom Spray, right? So I just spit out Venom and that primes an enemy with Venom. You can go in and because this is triggered by melee combos, I, you can go ahead and melee combo that enemy and then you can get this acid aura. Now the cool thing about the acid status effect is it deals damage over time to enemies but also weakens their defenses so you end up dealing more damage to them, right? But this is applied on all of the different damage types. One of my favorite combos is the uh, cryo, cryo glaive. So you throw this glaive out, it freezes an enemy, right? You go in and you combo that with some melee attacks, right? Your melee attack comes through and now you have this ice aura. 
And the cool thing about the Ice Aura is you run around and you melee enemies, but as you melee them, that Ice Aura is on and it freezes them. So any other enemies that kind of try to come up on you, they get hit with the Ice Aura and they're like, oh, we're going to hit you. And then they're frozen. And I'm like, oh, it's so dope. But the thing about this that I think is really interesting is each Javelin will actually combo their abilities differently. So like I was saying with the Interceptor, you gain an aura of that type when you, you know, fight an enemy with that specific elemental effect on them. Well, Stormcaller, which one of my friends was playing, does it differently. So they can toss a freeze on an enemy, right? Then they can combo that with a de detonation ability. And when they detonate, instead of getting an aura like the Interceptor does, because clearly they're like mage casters, it spreads that status effect to other enemies. So they can go ahead and freeze an enemy, right? Then they can detonate it using another ability and any new enemies that have joined that area will also become frozen. So they can chain their freezes in. It is really, really dope. I think that the Ranger gets bonus damage and I'm not sure what the Colossus gets. I'll get back with you guys on that, but that feels incredible. And it's definitely a throwback um, to Mass Effect Andromeda because with the biotic abilities, what you do is you prime an enemy, then you can detonate it using a different ability. So very, very similar in that aspect. Um, now, moving along to the next item, we have the weapons when it comes to combat. I'm gonna be real with you. Um, this is where I think it was a little, it was just okay. I didn't think that it was as amazing as like the abilities. I didn't think it was as amazing as the movements. Um, but the gunplay is just all right. You can equip two guns and then you have like a default melee that you get depending on your class. Um, of course, the Interceptors have two daggers. The Stormcaller has God knows what. I don't really know because they're always flying in the air. So I don't expect them to melee anything. Um, and then the Ranger has like an electric baton and the Colossus I didn't get to play. So I wouldn't be able to tell you about that one. Uh, then you get two guns and it can be two guns if you're choosing it does it can be a sniper rifle and a shotgun it can be a full automatic rifle and um, uh, whatever there's only one type of weapon that is restricted and that is heavy weapons and those are for colossuses only um, everybody else can use basically any weapon except for heavy weapons so definitely had a lot of fun with that now I'm not saying that gunplay is terrible I just don't feel like it's very strong plus I played at interceptor which is very melee based so, of course, I'm probably not going to have the best gun experiences, but I do have to tell you of a couple of really cool guns that I fell in love with. The Devastator. Oh, the Devastator is a sniper rifle um, that legitimately, it only has five ammo. It has one round per clip, okay? So after each shot, you got to reload, but you charge it up and then you, you snipe an enemy and it feels like a 10 meter AOE around them. It explodes and deals damage to a bunch of enemies at once. So as an interceptor, what I would go and do is I would find like get away, get up on like a high perch, snipe a big group of enemies, kind of thin them down a little bit, then fly down, uh, do, an, uh, do, an aer do an aerial attack and go ahead and slice up any remaining like heavy targets. So I really, really, really liked the Devastator. That one was great. Um, I also played the Constrictor shotgun. And basically what that is is a shotgun and it's um, spread can tighten if you kind of like charge it up a little bit. So it's very good if you want to, you know, get up in there close, pop a couple rounds up on somebody that's closer, or you can kind of charge it up a little bit and hit them with um, a much more condensed spray uh, if you want to fight like at mid-range. And lastly, I used an LMG, which is called the Relentless, I think. And it was okay. Like, it was an, it was an LMG. It, it did the job. I wasn't, like, blown away by it. So gunplay, I think, is okay. Um, it, like, I kind of like Destiny's gunplay a little bit better. Just, I'm just being real. I'm just being honest here. And, uh, when it comes to melee, of course, Interceptor is best. Everybody has their own, their own shtick that they're using. But, uh, there's no, like, melee combo system for the other classes aside for the Interceptor. So, I have a little bit of a skewed vision about how melee works in the game. Uh, because I was playing the Interceptor, but I assume that everybody else is just, like, a punch or, like, a thwack or whatever. All right, so one last thing I did want to point out before we went ahead and moved into customization is a modifying your javelin. Now, of course, I come from a Warframe background where we have different mod cards with different power strengths and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, modifying your javelin is actually very, very easy. All you have to do is, number one, get a component part and then put it into your javelin. 
And basically, components will augment different parts of your system. So some of them are armor, some of them are melee based. They'll all just kind of like increase your base of things. But the stats on them are all dependent on what kind of rarity you have. So sometimes you'll get a stronger component than others. Like if you get like a melee component, it's always going to boost your melee damage. But the rarer versions that you get will boost your melee damage a little bit more. And sometimes they'll have some random bonuses to them, which I think is fine and dandy. I have like an interceptor one that helps out uh, shields and armor and does something for my ultimate. I don't remember. I just slotted it in because it was better. You see little bars on your screen and they, they like say, oh, green means good. You get more. So I have one for that. And then I also have a melee one. Now you have a bunch of different slots. Now in the demo, you only get two slots um, when you rank up to 15, but there were like, maybe I want to say like anywhere, I want to say like maybe eight to 10 slots that are available as you level up. So that's how you unlock them. As you go deeper into the game, you'll go ahead and get more um, component slots to augment your javelin with. I think it's really, really easy. Nothing too complex. Do you want more of this type of damage? Do you want more of that type of damage? To be honest with you, I mean, I'm sure you could min-max for specific builds, but it isn't one of those things like it feels like you need very, very specific ones, kind of like we have in other games where things feel like um, specific mods are mandatory. This is more like a, okay, what are you trying to do with your javelin? Are you going melee heavy? Are you going light machine gun heavy? Like, what are you trying to make happen? And from what I've heard from some of their dev streams, they're going to have some very interesting mods later down the line, which actually augment the abilities to do different things. We'll see. Don't know how exactly how it's going to work, but um, modifying your javelin, pretty easy. So this is probably the section that I've been the most asked about by everybody in our community, which of course is because I'm the great, 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 ever living grandmama of Warframe fashion. Yes, I've been dressed to kill since the beginning, honey. And let me tell you, the fashion that they have, the possibilities in Anthem, oh, it's good, it's real good. Now I'm saying that this is potential, because we got kind of like a bare bones version of it, but the bare bones version of it, I was quite impressed by. Now, each javelin, of course, has its own distinctive color mapping. So the color maps are already there. However, you can decide what those textures for each color map is going to be. So do you want kind of like a more matted rubber for a certain area? There was leather. There was some like, I don't know, some weird textures that I'm not even bothered using because I'm just looking for metallic. Now, for all of the other textures that you can use, you can actually go ahead and paint on those textures. You get this, this color wheel? It's a color wheel. You can just do the slider. You're like, okay, I want it to be blue, but kind of teal. No, that's too teal. We're going to swing it back around. And then you can go ahead and put your little dot on the part of the saturation that you want. You even have little color numbers on the side so you can make note of what little color divots you use and then just select out the right saturation of it. Then it holds it in this little um, custom color section that it has. So definitely very, very happy with that because it's gonna make fashion framing easy you don't have to buy palettes it's right that that one color circle thing is all you need except when it comes to metallics now this is where my my, my soul crumbled where I cried on the inside and I was like, sweet Lord Jesus I am praying for you to do better I believe in you Bungie I'm just giving you not Bungie oh my god Bioware listen y'all the names are just too similar but anyway when it came to metallic so there are three metallic um uh what do you call this textures that you can use however those metallic textures they have a palette that is set for the metallics and there ain't no rose gold they had gold they had copper they had tin how you gonna have tin and not have rose gold what is wrong with you? They had platinum, they had rhodium, they had all of these different things and no rose gold. You are hurting my soul by your wear, okay? I'm expecting you to do better. You know what else I'm expecting them to do? Is have some community creators for armor. So let's move on to the armor spot because I need to move away from the metallics that broke my heart. But you know, it's cool. You can go ahead and select what textures you want for any of the color maps of any of the things in game fantastic the armors though now this is the first time i saw any microtransactions in the game and it was very 
well placed it was subtle they don't like have a big market for you to choose from it's just like hey do you want to look at other arm options here take a look at it now we only got one armor customization um for each of the slots there weren't like a multitude of them yet but you know what they had was pretty good so i was able to select that and you did have to pay um with what do you call this whatever in-game currency that they had not sure if that's going to be how it is at the very very end of it or how we're going to earn it or any of that but you're able to select it and it just kind of like re-armors up that slot. Kind of like the way that armors are currently being done in Warframe. It just kind of goes over that part and you get like some cool shits on it. Which I really, really like. But what they need to do is they need to introduce some artists to work for them from the community. And what they need to do is they need to be able to design other things for the javelins kind of like Tenogen in Warframe because we have some very very talented artists there and let me tell you right now it is fantastic because I don't know where else they're getting their money from I don't I don't know if FIFA is footing the bill for all of the things that are going on with Anthem or something legitimately I don't know was it NHL NFL, NBL, NBC, NBA, I don't know the sports games that they all do, whatever that is, are they footing the bill? But I don't know where they're getting their money from. So I think that it's a good way to get the community involved with creating really, really nice content and, you know, maybe put some money in your pockets so that you can make, you know, free DLC for us or whatever. Anyway, they definitely need that. Um, they, you could buy different shoulders, chest, helmet, legs, and you could put decals on them. All of the decals are ugly. Just leaving that there, letting you guys know. But you know, if you need anybody to help you pick colors or you know, be a taste maker for Anthem, give your boy a call. So skedaddling out of the Ford, let's have a quick chat about mission types that they have in there. Of course, we have these standard missions which take you through these story quests, um, which for the most part were really, really fun. Strongholds, which are their dungeons where you like basically go through a mission that's more difficult and you get loot at certain points of it and then you get to fight a big boss at the end. Tell me that this big ass spider boss does not look like testicles. I'm just saying testicles somebody in my stream mentioned it and at first i was like it looks like a hairy ass but the closer i look at it it's a big testicle spider i don't know if i like this we just pop in testicles here now i guess um but for strongholds that was definitely fun fighting these big crazy bosses i think that those are their two strongest game modes the other one that they're toting is you know their free play it's a great way to get resources for um blueprints and basically blueprints are you crafting shit for more better rolls on them, whatever. Uh, but legitimately, they're free play. You can get more resources from there. And when I say resources, I mean like crafting resources. And then um, you have like some world events that happen, but it's kind of like the, the boring part of the gameplay. It's really, there's just too many spaces in between that aren't filled with enemies that you need to like destroy, you know? I'm, I'm just saying, I mean, I guess it's pretty and it's got some cool landmarks and whatnot, but really where the action is are the missions and the strongholds. And the great thing about all of these game modes is uh, you can decide the difficulty. That is right. Now, straight out of the gates, um, well, not straight out of the gate, at, since the very beginning, early stage of the game, you're actually able to choose between easy, medium, and hard. And hard, if you go into the stronghold, ooh, it can be dicey. It can be dicey if you're not prepared because they actually give you um, gear check recommendations. You know, you should have all greens for, um, for normal mode. You know, instead of just the common items that you could use in easy, you should be in green for normal mode. And then for hard mode, you should be in all blues, which is the rare items. But it does not stop at normal or easy normal and hard there's actually grandmaster one grandmaster two and grandmaster three now listen some people are already having their asses kicked in hard mode and there's three other difficulty levels that you can go ahead and introduce into your gameplay that is fucking sick that is something that i have wanted for a while you know some days you just chilling some days you're just chilling so let's dial it back a little bit you know Maybe you know you're going to be taking care of some animals. Maybe you know that you're going to be, um, you know, watching a Netflix series in the background and you don't want to be thinking too hard. 
go ahead and dial it back to, you know, Grandmaster 1 instead of playing at Grandmaster 2 tonight. Or maybe if you're just trying to grind out a little bit, you know, maybe just take it, take it up a notch. Because as you go higher, number one, the enemies, of course, get more difficult. You get increased rarity items, so you get more uh, of a chance to get, like, legendary gear, right? To help you gear up for that place. Um, so that's definitely a nice reward on it, but the big icing on top of the cake is I do believe that the devs had stated they don't just get more hit points and deal more damage to you. Because, you know, they, they do get more hit points and they do deal more damage to you, but as you go up into the more difficult levels, each of the enemies actually gain new abilities. So it's not just gonna be the same old, same old challenge that you had before, but they're unlocking abilities as well. So I'm I'm excited. I'm excited. You know, I played easy for a while. I was like, this is cool. I played normal. I was like, oh, okay, not bad. I played hard and I was like, this is where the game is at. So I'm very excited to see difficulty introduced. Definitely love missions, definitely love strongholds, and yeah, on the free play. Alrighty, so I think that about covers everything that I wanted to go ahead and touch on. Didn't really say too much about the lore, mainly because of the fact that we got like one storyline quest, which was interesting enough. It was a little bit anticlimactic, and I wasn't necessarily a fan of that, but it is just a demo, so I don't really want to judge too much. I will say though, I spoke to a couple NPCs, and um, there's some weird shit happening in this world. So I can't wait to see how that all unfolds because we're gonna get into the next part. If we're talking about it, I am going to end up pre-ordering this game. I know some of y'all just winced, I know some of y'all are triggered, but so far with the gameplay that I have experienced, I really, really like it, you guys. Um, now, of course, I'm assuming this is on the assumption it's just an assumption and not necessarily how it's gonna work in the end uh, and it might come back to bite me in the butt but the loading screen issues they gotta get fixed right because Bioware doesn't want to end their career with fucking loading screen issues right I'm just saying it's something that's gonna have to go uh, plus I don't see any kind of like modern day game being able to make it live with all of these loading issues like they're bad they're really, really bad. Like, please don't let me spend 30 minutes in a stronghold and then try to load out and not get the five rares that I saw drop. Don't do this to me. But that aside, the gameplay was absolutely amazing. I really feel like I got um, my money's worth. It was a it was a free VIP demo for me because I have EA access or whatever, Origin access. I don't know what it's called. I don't know what I'm doing with these these days, but for me, I feel very strongly that it is something I'm gonna pre-order. Now, do I suggest that you guys pre-order it? I'm gonna say wait for June 1st to see if they iron out their kinks uh, further. Um, I'm gonna say go ahead and maybe even wait to launch to see if they've ironed out their kinks. However, I will not have anybody shame me. I spend $150 on Prime Access, so I just get a shiny monster with extra guns that are also shiny and some cool looking armors for uh, $150. I'm cool with paying 60, 70 bucks for a game that I've had a lot of joy with. So I'm leaving it at that. I really, really enjoyed everything that I did today. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Um, also, if you guys are curious at all about any further Anthem co content, go ahead and leave that in the comments below. Let me know what you want me to cover aside from the fashion, because I know y'all are gonna be asking. But that about does it for me for now. And as always, love somebody, hurt nobody, and touch your body. Now, if you guys are curious, be sure to visit me over at twitch.tv backslash a gay guy plays, specifically on like June 1st, so that we can go ahead and follow up on all of the things that we talked about today. Regardless, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.